Teamwork Projects is the project management platform that TIU is trialing for use under the project framework. This video will take you through an example course development project set up on the UniSA TIU Teamwork Projects website so that you can get an overview of what the platform has to offer. It is not meant to be a rigid template that must be adhered to. This project was chosen and set up because it's a familiar type of project for ADs and OEDs. Ready? Let's dive in. The Teamwork Projects platform is commercial software. It provides an integrated set of tools that allows you to create, store, share, and pull in information about projects so that it acts as a dashboard and repository, not just a place to tick off tasks or track progress. And it allows you to be as granular or as big picture as you want or need to be. Here is the UniSA Teamwork page. If you've been added to a project, or when you request a Teamwork project site, you'll be given a login. So, let's get in there. Once inside, you'll see two sets of navigation. The top set allows you to navigate the Teamwork site itself. The second set allows you to navigate within the active area, in this case, projects. We're going to select the course development exemplar from the list. Once in the project, we start off on the overview page. As you'd guess from the name, this is a big picture view of everything that's going on with the project. So, you can look at the type of tasks that have been set up, who those tasks are assigned to, the milestones and whether or not they've been met, and the different ways of looking at tasks. We're going to start with milestones and then go back to tasks because milestones are the first thing that you'll set up in your project planning. Milestones are time-sensitive achievements. If milestones are missed, it is indicative that the project may be at risk of missing its deadline. What the milestones are is up to you. Think about what is meaningful from a reporting perspective as well as what's important to measure to keep your project on track. Because milestones represent achievement of work, you'll see in this instance, week one published that it's 50% complete because it's had a task list assigned to it, and obviously, at least one task on the list has been completed. Let's pop over now and look at tasks. In the Task tab, you start off in List View, which is pretty straightforward. You add a list, which is a category to assign to tasks, by clicking on the green Add Task List button at the top right. Once you've set up your task lists, you can add a task. Just expand a list and click on the green Add a Task button. Then, add as many or as little detail as you like. If we go back up the page, just below the Add Task List button, you'll see a couple of smaller buttons with icons on them. These are different ways to view and interact with tasks. We're in List View right now. Let's go to the middle button, which is Board View. Board View is a post-it note on a whiteboard or butcher's paper sort of view of a project. This allows you to sort tasks in ways not related to milestones or lists, but that might have more meaning for you. For instance, you may want to view tasks by team or individual, or by resources or geographic location, or by weeks or months. However you want to sort things is up to you. It's pretty straightforward to set up your board columns. Just scroll to the right and click Add a Column. If you want to add a task in this view, you click Add a Card and work through the settings, adding as much or as little detail as you want it will automatically be added to a task list called Card View in List View. You may find it easier to set up your tasks in List View first, then in Board View, go to the Backlog button and add them to a column. Obviously, 
All of the tasks in my list have been assigned to a column in board view, so I don't have anything to drag in here right now. Keep in mind that adding tasks to a board column does not remove them from a list. It's just another way for you to categorize them. Now, let's click on the third view of tasks to view the Gantt chart. For those of you not familiar with them, a Gantt chart takes your milestones and tasks and plots them against a calendar so that you have a visual representation of where things are at in terms of time. In Teamwork Projects, the Gantt chart view shows those tasks and milestones not yet completed. You can also edit tasks in here. To see tasks, you simply expand the lists at the left. The little pencil icon comes up, and you can edit your tasks. Tasks that have been given a start date as well as an end date or due date will expand across the time span accordingly on the Gantt chart. For those tasks that have just been given a due date, they'll show up as just a little blip on the due day. If a task is dependent on another task, for instance, an OED can't publish summative assessments until all the information is provided to them, you'll see a little line between the two tasks indicating that relationship. The Gantt chart is a great way to help you fine-tune your tasks' due dates and start dates and see which tasks you want to provide more information about. This visual display also works well to help you plan work as well as see it in progress. We'll exit out of Gantt chart now and return to the previous view. We've now seen the basic project management features that Teamwork Project has. Now let's explore the information management features, starting with the Message tab. Messages allows you to send, categorize, and store emails right here in your project. No more having to search around Outlook or create rules for different aspects of your work. Organizing your messages here means that all communication is tracked within your project site. Team members can also log into the site and reply from this interface, so you can easily track replies and your team members can find your messages quickly. We'll now click on the Files tab. While you'll want to keep storing content-related files on the UniSA servers, project management-related files can and should be stored here. Doing so allows for easy access to important project documents such as the project brief and plan, meeting minutes, and other administrative information. You can also set who has access to which documents here. Now we'll look at notebooks. Notebooks allows you to enter information directly into an HTML page where you can then track changes. These could be used for notes directly related to the course, such as specialist language jargon and acronyms, or for bootstrap code used to build standardized items or other types of collaborations. The next tab is the Risks Register. The Risks Register is an essential part of project planning and should be created by your team at the very start of a project. The Risk Register allows you to use your past experience with projects to identify risks, their likelihood, their impact, and then to brainstorm ways of proactively managing those risks. You can and should also add risks as they crop up in the project, as well as note whether or not your planned management strategies worked. Doing this means at the end of your project, you'll have a detailed record to use in writing up your lessons learned and to apply to future projects. The next tab we'll look at is Links. The functionality here is pretty straightforward. You click on the big green Add a Link button to add online resources and sites relevant to your project and store them here for easy reference. In the People tab, you add your team members and then can assign roles to them. Roles come in handy if you have more than one person doing a specific category of work. For instance, you may end up needing more than one OED in a project. Here, we've already added one OED, 
So we'll click in the box with the plus sign to bring up a list of people and add an additional OED. Done. The final tab we'll look at is Settings. Settings allows you to see and edit generic settings related to your project. It also allows you to hide or show different project features in your tabs and to manage how notifications happen within your project. We don't have time to cover all of Teamwork Project's features in this video, but there is so much other functionality worth exploring. For instance, if you click on email addresses from the overview page, you'll see a list of unique email addresses that you can use in Outlook to forward messages related to your project to various categories. The Teamwork website has an extensive list of tutorials related to the Teamwork Projects platform. However, you don't have to start from 